Hello everyone and welcome to the monthly update video for June 2020. I'm Jura C and in this update video we're going to be taking a look at what's happened this past month and then looking forward to what's going to be on each of the channels this month. So, what's been going on in the background? To start, the month of May saw me begin the switch from Patreon to Subscribestore. Reason being is the announcement of imposition of taxes upon patrons. It's not everyone, but I don't want to take the chance on it being the ones I have. Well, currently one, but still. So, other than that, I've taken the time to dress up the look of thumbnails for gameplay videos. More on that later. Uh, the last thing I've done this past month was to learn how to implement timestamp codes in the description for each video. Um, lastly, I've decided to up the amount of uploads for the 3D Jorasi and Jorasi Dev channels. More on that to come. So, what are we doing in the month of June as far as Jurassic Plays? Well, we're going to be continuing the main story of Rune Factory 2 this month. We should be finishing up summer and starting the fall season month. Vague, vague period of time. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the thumbnails for all future videos will be more dynamic in appearance. And here's an example of what we're going to be looking at. Uh, and the other alteration for all videos from this point forward is the inclusion of timestamps. As I mentioned before, uh, these are located in the description of each uploaded video. So if you want to skip through the intro or to an interesting point in the video, check the description. There should be a timestamp for it. Moving on to Jura C. Deb. As I said before, we're going to increase the total number of videos. This time it's going to, we're, from now on, we're going to two a month. So uploads are going to be on Tuesday and Thursday of the second week of the month. And this month we're going to be finishing up the modeling of the generic male head, male character model head, and moving on to working on clothes for it. And like I said, for the previous section, timestamps are going to be included moving forward. Next up, we have 3D Jurassic. And like, like with Jurassic Dev, it's going to have an increase in the amount of videos going up. Uh, similarly, it will be two a month. Uploads will be on Tuesday and Thursday of the third week of the month. I'm moving it from that Saturday to earlier in the, in the week, so be aware of that. Each month we'll see one start to finish uh, project video and one portion of a larger multi-part project. 
for this month, we've got this component part. Uh, you'll be hearing what it is in the video to come. But I've got multiple projects that I'm going to be needing this for in the future, so I figured I'd, since it's going to be one thing that's used multiple times, I'll just go ahead and make one video out of it. Figured that would be a good idea. Uh, also, we're going to be starting to fix a problem I've been having relating to car headlights shining through my bedroom window at night. So that's the multi-part for this for uh, now. Moving on. to unboxing. I can already say this month we're not having an unboxing video, but we do have some nice stuff lined up for next month. So I hope you stick around for that. And with that, it's time to hand things over to Comics Corner. I will see you on the other side. And here we have cover B of Sonic the Hedgehog, issue 22 from IDW. Have a sort of a happy time here. Everyone's getting cookies. That is everyone that is uh, safe from the Zombot virus. And we've got this one central figure here that's in a brighter color. I have a feeling they're going to be important. So here's the cover for the, uh, here's cover A variant for the Sonic the Hedgehog issue 22. And looks like we've got problems at the Resistance HQ. Let's see how things are going. We all remember the story, don't we? I think we should. Let's just get into it. So, also, I'm skipping the uh, roll call because we already know the characters that are involved here. We've got Amy Rose overworking herself, trying to keep things flowing. And she, right here, she's looking at a big computer map. She knows where Sonic is, knows what Tails is up to, knows what Vector and Espio, or where they are. They're back at base. Uh, Silver's doing work on his own. Uh, Rouge the Bat is unaccounted for. Poor girl is driving herself crazy, trying to keep things straight. Thankfully, Cream comes in to offer some cookies and tea as a break, which Amy Rose gratefully accepts. The situation At Resistance HQ is packed wall to wall with people, and it seems there's some commotion going on. And here we have exactly what the commotion is all about. 
Vector and Espio brought back Zombot Charmy. It's a brilliant thing to have done. Risk infecting everyone here at the headquarters. But that's not the source of the main problem that they're having. There's also, here's the character in the robe, and it turns out they're infected to the point of becoming a Zombot. Which they do, and pandemonium erupts, as one can expect, causing damage to the containment bubble that Charmy Bee is being held in. The bubble does indeed break, and now two Zombots are free. Pretty much every, everyone is lost that is at HQ due to the problems mentioned before. And this connects with the last issue where we saw only one rescue shuttle arrived to pick up everyone at Central City Bay. And as Amy informs Tails of what's happened at HQ, Tails informs Amy that the cure he had been working on got destroyed. Hopefully next month will be better. And here we have issue 83 of IDW's My Little Pony Friendship is Magic comic. Looks like we've got a mystery to be solved in this issue. As always, let's take a look at the other covers. So we got cover A, there's cover B, and then the final cover. I like the cover A better. Well, looks like everything's starting out as just a trip to see some tortoise races. And seems like Rainbow Dash's tortoise named Tank is going to be an entrant into the races. And it seems there's mystery afoot. Twilight will apparently be teaming up with Lay Stride of Trotland Yard. Seems a tortoise got loose by the name of Silver Blaze. And the going theory is that a gate was left open and the tortoise got out. They make their way to their first interrogation. And turns out that the resident of the house is a bit deaf. So it takes a good pounding to get anyone to the door. So, interrogation goes that this pony right here potentially left the gate open but he denies it. Twilight is having problems with the colder atmosphere in this town. And as thanks for actually listening to him, he lends Twilight a hat and coat. 
there, then off to the next interrogation. This time at the manor house, as it were. And as an aside, we have a mention of some dresses, or this one's posable, articulated, collectible dolls. Rarity made dresses for, and apparently hasn't been paid yet. Later on, they retire for the day, and Spike puts Tank's racing shell on him, and that gives Twilight an idea of what's going on. Now the races must happen, else they'll never find the missing tortoise. And the race is on. Rather short race track, but that's to be expected for tortoises. And the at the finish, once every all the race is over, Twilight is able to rip the racing shells off of the tortoises. revealing the tortoise that went missing. Well, I hope you enjoyed those comics. I know I certainly did. And that brings this update video to a close. I'm really looking forward to everything I've got planned for this month, and I hope you find something to enjoy in all the videos uploaded. See you all next time. Hey there everyone, just wanted to thank you all for watching this video, and if you did enjoy it, remember to give me a like uh, and a subscribe if you are so inclined. Also, I do have a Patreon, the links are in the description below. You can have your name in the credits here as well.